Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today I want to talk to you about how I control fungus, mold, diseases, and insects on my seed starts. Every year you're going to probably get green algae, you're going to get mold, you're going to get fungus. Not all of it is bad for your plants, but sometimes you can get something like damping off disease that can, you know, kill your seedlings. I also, for some reason, will get aphids in here if I'm not careful and I bring something indoors. Um, but I always get those little gnats that fly around the I don't know what they are, if they're just, you know, soil gnats or fungus gnats or whatever. They don't really tend to damage my plants, but I don't like them. So this is how I'm going to treat them this year. Soapy water and neem oil. Before I even go on, I just want to say the video is going to show you a bunch of flats that I've treated over the last seven to eight days. They've all been sprayed with the neem oil, no damage. But just because I do it, or you read online certain sprays or mixes you should use or you see other videos where people have success, you should always test spray a new product and make sure that it doesn't damage your plants. And that just means, you know, you may just spray this one uh, plant right here before you spray all of them. And this is, what is that, an S30? And if you do things right, these are all brand new starting cells brand new starting mix, you're still going to get molds and fungus. Here's one of them that's starting. This is on Cocoa Core. That's kind of hair-like white fuzz and there's a little bit there, some right in there. That's one type. Over here I have another mold or fungus. It's hard for me to tell the difference, but you can see it white right in there. These are my Tabasco peppers that are coming up. I'm also getting these little gnats that I get every year. And again, this has been cleaned out all brand new starting mix containers and right at the tip of the stick it's going to be hard to see but right there see if it moves that's one of the nets and I'm going to kill it oh it's gone that tend to come and invade my starting mixes I mean my seed starts so I'm going to spray this with neem oil to try and control everything if you have one or two trays, you can use cinnamon. There's cinnamon in there. Here's the same white mold. The cinnamon does seem to stop it from growing. It doesn't stop all molds and fungus, but it does have a property that does, you know, take care of things. And again, if I only had one seed start like this, oh, they need to be watered. If I only had one tray, I would probably use cinnamon, but I have too many, and I just don't feel like covering everything in cinnamon. So that's why I'm doing this neem oil video to see how it works controlling molds and fungus and insects for seed Today stuff. is Monday, January 26th. This is the second spraying of the neem oil spray to control the fungus and uh, mold on my seedlings. And I just wanted to show you how they look. In the next uh, segment, I'll show you the outcome after a week of identifying mold or fungus or both and how two sprayings of the neem oil work. And these just got watered now. They just got sprayed with the neem oil, so all the seedlings will now have had two good soakings with the neem oil and soapy water spray. So as of right now, I sprayed last Thursday when I showed you the problem. No ill effects to the plants. All the plants look perfectly fine. And I am taking a bit of a risk that I didn't test spray it. I just went ahead and sprayed all of my seedlings. And there's not much growing on the surface. In some areas, like right down here, there's some white mold or fungus. And that was in some other places. The first spraying really controlled a lot, but this is the second one. And I'll let this go for another two days and come back and show you how I made the spray and the outcome. Spray one. If there's any damage, you know, don't use your spray. If there's no damage after 48 hours, go ahead and spray. So the way I'm setting this up is 32 ounces of water with about a quarter teaspoon of soap. I've done videos on how do you make a soapy water spray and you'll have to check them out. It really depends on the type of soap you're using. I always try and say get the cleanest, simplest soap, which means no degreasers, no heavy perfumes or anything like that. So in 32 ounces of water, one quart, I put in one, you know, to one and a half teaspoons of neem oil. You don't need more than that. You don't want more than that. Whoa, what am I doing? That lid goes here. The reason you need the soap is because I don't know if you can see it 
but you can see the neem oil floats on top. So the soapy water will break the oil down and disperse it through the liquid. And if when I shake this up, if it doesn't get dispersed, that means I would add a little bit more soap. But start with less soap and kind of work your way up. And never, when you go to spray, you want to make sure you shake it so that this oil is dispersed through the whole bottle. Never just spray when the oil's floating in top because all you're getting is soapy water. And then when you get up to here eventually, you're going to have a high concentration of neem oil and that will damage your plants. So when you shake it up, you see the color of the water changes and that means the neem oil has really been fully dispersed. What I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to cut in uh, about a week ago two cuts showing the fungus and molds that are on here and you know I basically sprayed them. And then let me also cut out now and show you the success. So here are my seed starts a week after spraying them with neem oil. I did uh, two sprays about every three days or so, something like that. And you can see that they are starting to dry out and just real quick when your starting mixes go from a dark color to a light color that's the signal that you bottom water and water your seedlings. So you're always waiting for the top to dry up. That will dry first and that will give you the signal that you need to water them. It's also good, I think, to let the tops dry out like this because it does um, inhibit mold and fungus and disease growth and stuff like that. But anyway, the neem oil has really been effective. It did not damage my plants. There is no signs on these trays of any kind of white cotton-like fungus or mold. When you come over to the other batch of seed starts, they look pretty good too. This row right in here, you can see still kind of the white color on top of the soil. And that is some kind of fungus. And it might be because of this grouping right in here is a 100% organic feed mix that I sort of put into the starting mix. And one of them is a biozyme that has bacteria that are good for the soil. That could be, you know, a mold that's growing that's perfectly normal. It doesn't look like it's damaging anything right now, but that's going to get another spray of neem oil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over here, everything seems to be looking, you know, pretty good. This is a tray that I kept just to the side, and I wanted to show you what was on the plants. Again, if the other video didn't really show it too well, you can see fungus, white cotton-like fungus here. It's a little bit different than what's over there. But the neem oil totally took care of these white cotton-like patches that were coming out in the soil. And you can see that. So the neem oil spray really, I think, is effective with the soapy water. The fungus gnats seem to have diminished. I haven't seen any for a couple of days. And all you do is make sure you shake up your spray every time you go to spray it, you really want to disperse the oil through the soapy water and just spray the top of the plants down and the top of the soil. And that's how I'm going to take care of my seed starts and hopefully keep them healthy. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.